Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock for Ellen Hudson, and I'm here with some quick watercolor tips. Today, we're going to talk about some terminology, specifically terms that are mentioned in the Daniel Smith watercolor chart, because this chart has a lot of numbers that might be confusing, and I want to explain the ones that probably mean the most to the most people. The chart on the left is the printed one. The one on the right is the dot chart. The dot chart lists things a little bit differently. It says series one, whereas the chart on the left, the printed one, doesn't. And this is the online version. It also says series one. But on the printed version, what you get is a giant number one. And that giant number one tells you it's a series one paint. And that means it's one of the less expensive. So it's from a more common synthetic or mineral. If you get into number fours, you're going to talk about more expensive. So that's what that number means. On this printed chart, it says it's available in 15, 5, and stick. That means 15 milliliter tubes, 5 milliliter tubes, and sticks. The 15s are the full line. They make all of them in 15 milliliter bottles that make about three pans of paint. And then there's the 5 mils that they have made out of their most popular colors. So if you're looking for ones that other people have been very satisfied with, those are a great option. And then they also have sticks. And I'm not using the sticks at this time. I bought myself a couple just so I could see what they are. They also are the equivalent of about three pans of paint. They have that much pigment in them. And a pan of paint, you can either squeeze it into a little well in your palette, or you can put them in these little pans. And it doesn't matter if they flatten out or if they stay lumpy. Either one is going to work great because they re-wet very well. It's one of the features of Daniel Smith paints, that they do this very, very well. Next, we'll look at the second line of numbers. There's a Roman numeral, a digit, a letter, and an icon, and we're going to find out what each one of them means. The Roman numeral means how light fast it is. That means how long it will last when exposed to light. And sadly, one of our favorite colors, opera pink, this beautiful bright color, is fugitive, which means it will fade with the light. So you want to select colors with a one if you want them to last long. Now, staining is something that actually really applies when you're actually painting. And it's the ability to lift paint off. So if you're trying to remove some paint, either for a technique, or if you just had, had a mistake that you want to wash out, or an edge that you want to wash out, then finding one that has a number one is really good, because look how well this lapis lazuli washes out. I just put plain water over top of very dry paint and then dabbed it off with a paper towel, and get my nice clean brush full of water, and get any residue off there, and I can get that paper practically back to new. When you get into the two, threes, and fours, they have successively less ability to lighten. So if you have a color like this at the edge of your painting and you wanna wash out the edge and make it really soft, it's gonna be harder to do. So look for ones with a one if you wanna wash them out, or fours if you want them to stain that way. Next up is granulation. There's a Y or an N for whether or not it has or does not have a natural texture to it. This color is called cobalt teal blue and has a beautiful texture in it and makes a lovely granulated sky. Next to it, I'm actually using one of the Primatex, which you would think would have natural granulation, and it does not, it's Amazonite. And then I'm also comparing lunar black with lamp black. And after we give them a second to dry, you can see the texture in the two that say they have granulation to some degree or another and the others do not. Notice the paint that's above that, the pink, the opera pink, that says that it's a granulating paint, but it has a very minimal granulation. So it, it's a real sliding scale of granulation. Our final icon in this series that we're going to talk about today is transparency. There's a little circle and it's either completely open for transparent, completely closed for opaque, or half and half for somewhere in the middle. I'm taking a swatch of quinacridone rose, letting it dry, and then I'm gonna put some paints over top of it. And this first one is New Gamboge, which has the fully open icon, which means it's fully transparent. It's almost like you're taking a piece of yellow glass and looking at that pink paint through it, because you can see both of them very well. This is Bismuth Vanadate. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it is a fully opaque paint. Fully opaque doesn't mean it's acrylic, but it means more like you're looking at it through a yellow frosted glass. If you can kind of tell the difference, it looks just a little bit chalkier. And there are times may, when you may want 
paints with particular properties, and this chart is invaluable in helping you to determine that. I've created an infographic that you can pin to your Pinterest wall because this will help to remind you of all of these things we've talked about today. So go to the Ellen Hudson blog, link in the description, and pin that to your wall, and it'll also link you up to the video. So you can come and rewatch this just by going to your Pinterest board of watercolor tips because we're going to have a lot of these coming up every Sunday. So please join me again in a week, and I'll be back with more quick tips on watercolor. Take care and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.